Hey there and welcome to Flurn. I am so excited to announce our guest instructor for this tutorial, Rob Woodcox. Rob is a good friend of mine and has built his career over the last 10 years as a conceptual and fine art photographer. And today he's gonna guide you through creating one of his iconic images. Give it up for Rob Woodcox. Hey everybody, I'm so happy to be here with Flurn. My name is Rob Woodcox, and I'm gonna be sharing one of my surreal images with you today as a tutorial. There's a guy floating in midair, and he's got a lot of hats kind of floating around him. It's very mystical. Now, when I created this image, I was traveling to New York City, and I had just made the decision to quit my day job. And this photo was sort of that expression of my liberation. So all the hats represent your typical business position at a job, and just kind of like on graduation day, throwing that up in the air. Let's go ahead and open these images up in Photoshop. The images are accessible on flurn.com. You can go ahead and click the link that's listed below. So as you can see, we've got our background right here in Washington Square, New York City. We have our subject who we will be photoshopping into the scene. So we're gonna go ahead and start off with um, cutting out our subject. So I'm gonna select my background layer and then take the layer of my subject and just pull this tab out so I can see what's going on. And I'm gonna take this layer holding shift, I'm just gonna drop him into that scene. So now holding shift just places everything right in the center, um, which just workflow wise puts it right where we need it. And let's go ahead and work on masking our subject. So when I mask, I like to keep the subject in the frame that I'm gonna be masking it into. So I can always know that I'm getting every little detail masked out, including the edges. Now, a quick tip if you are trying to photograph levitation type images, I really wanted this person to look like they were floating. So I actually had my subject stand on one of these guard barriers, which have been photoshopped out in the background layer. And I actually had him jump in the air as high as he could and just look like it was natural. So I, I instructed him to just have a soft expression, to just kind of throw his arms out and let them hang. And what we ended up with was this very uh, real looking shot of him floating because he's actually in the air. Um, now, another note to recognize is that the light that is hitting him is the natural light from the scene. So if we go ahead and move this layer over, you can see that there's a bright glow behind our arch. The sun was actually coming from kind of this top right corner and blasting through the arch. We shot this early in the morning, so it was low light. And so this was just the natural light. Now, when you shoot uh, levitation images on location with matching light to your background, it's the most seamless way to get the best end results. I always make sure that I shoot on location so that I can achieve that. So once we cut our subject out, it's gonna be much easier to place them on the background and make it look real. So over here on the right, I'm gonna create a layer mask on our subject. I'm gonna select the brush over here on the left side and he is in focus, so we want the edge of our brush to be pretty hard. We'll say around 78%. I find that sometimes when you go above 80%, um, you get some weird uh, clipping happening with your masking. So um, I'm gonna stay around 78% and change the size of the brush to affect the hardness as I'm masking my subject. For starters, let's just go ahead and make the brush pretty big, and with the black chosen on the palette over here, we're just gonna start painting away this information from the mask. Uh, we just wanna get the majority of this um, gone so that we can move in closer and do the detailed masking around our subject. So once I get the, the bulk of it gone, I'm gonna make the brush a little smaller, continue to do just that. Now, my favorite way to cut out subjects is using the brush tool and a layer mask. There's other ways to do this same method. And so if that's something that you would like to try in your own way, feel free to do that. All right, so we're roughly cutting out our subject and now we're gonna go ahead and zoom in and get the close up details. And as we get closer to our subject, we're gonna wanna make sure that we match the brush to the edge of our subject. Let's go ahead and do a little bit more cleanup. Keep that shoelace there. That's a nice 
detail to make it look like he's floating. Any sort of movement with hair or clothing can really add to the effect. So let's say you had your subject wearing even just this wrinkle in his sweater is really nice to add that sort of floating detail. All right, so now we're going to zoom in and just really work with the edge of our subject. And we're going to go ahead and jump into a speed edit. All right, so we have just finished cutting out our subject. He looks great. And really quickly, I wanna just go ahead and uh, flip this image. Uh, I think it would just look nice if he's facing more to the right of the frame. Um, I know in US culture, we read from left to right. So this is just a thing I do sometimes. Um, I like the flow of the image to kind of move from left to right. So we're gonna go ahead and flip this horizontal. Boom, that looks so good. All right, so let's go ahead and bring on our floating hats. When I was shooting this image, I actually just threw this hat up into the air many times to catch multiple different angles of the hat. I wanted every single hat in the image to be unique. I didn't want to duplicate the same hat. So I've already pre-cut out the hats. I use the same method as I did with the subject. So let's go ahead and bring those on into Photoshop. All right, so let's go ahead and go to File, Place Embedded. We're gonna go ahead and select our hat image and place. Let's go ahead and just make this the same size. And we'll just go ahead and hit enter. And look at that, we've got our hats. Now to save time, we went ahead and cut out these images in advance. However, when I first created this image, it actually took you know a couple hours of cutting out the hats placing them, figuring out a composition that really spoke to me. So I would encourage you to go ahead and play around with the placement of the hats. Feel free to, you know, move them around if you'd like, and that will, you know, give you your own unique version on this image. All right, now just one quick little note. When I did end up uh, composing this image, I'm gonna go ahead and use a red paintbrush just to show you, um, you know, what this looks like. Let's go ahead and create a new layer. Um, something that I did to really, you know, capture the eye and, and really help you move through the image was I really played with the idea of triangles. So if you go ahead and follow these lines, we've got this sort of triangle framing our subject. And then we've got this sort of inverse triangle also framing our subject. So we're getting some really strong framing of our subject. And, you know, once I had kind of created these anchor hats, I went and I, you know, kind of filled in the gaps all in between. So just something to think about. Um, when I do compose these things, spont I, it's, it's not entirely spontaneous. I do put some thought into, you know, why pieces are being placed where. All right, so now that we have our hats into the image, I really just wanna add a little bit of pop to the photo. Now, the lighting looks very natural. Everything looks kind of as it should be. It's pretty well balanced, but I really want the subject to pop and I want there to be a sort of glowing effect to the image. So what I'm gonna do is create a folder on the bottom right here, um, add our subject to that. We can say Cam, that's the name of the model. And we're gonna go ahead and switch the blending mode for that folder to normal so that everything we do within this folder only applies to this layer. So we're gonna go ahead and create a curves layer. And now notice if I you know, pull this way up or down, it's only affecting the model. Um, now I really just want to create a little more glow on the front side of him, like more of a fill light, but I wanna keep that contrast pretty high. So I'm gonna drag these shadows down and just, you know, really make him pop a little bit more. Six years later, I know how to use curves so much better. <laughs> but 
This was like 10 layers before, it's like one layer now. <laughs> now, I'd love to make a note that Curves is a really, uh, you know, diverse tool. It's something that I would encourage you to play with over time. You know, 10 years ago when I was using Curves for the first time, it was challenging. I didn't, I didn't know what I was doing. I was just kind of playing with all these little points. But, you know, generally if you raise, you know, the top side of the graph and lower the bottom, you're creating what we call the S-curve, which creates contrast. Now it's going to affect every image differently based on the tonal ranges within an image. So I would encourage you to play with that, you know, figure out how that can work best for you. Now let's go ahead and do some toning adjustments to the background selectively. So notice how our hats and our model are above the background layer. Anything that we do in between cam and the background layer are just going to apply to the background. So I just want to add a little bit of a glowy effect behind the model to kind of separate him from this uh, monument. So we're just going to raise um, that till he really pops, which right about there is good. And then I'm going to hit Command I to invert that mask over here on our curves layer. And using a super soft brush at 0% hardness, we're going to go ahead and apply that glow just behind cam. And what's nice is that it's really easy for this to look natural because we've already got the natural light in the image coming from that direction. So it's really easy to get this glow to look realistic. Sometimes when I'm applying a bit of a glow like this, I do one curves layer to do the initial glow, and then I create a second curves layer to do a, a much more intense inner glow. So now this, what I'm looking for right now is this sort of line right behind cam. I want that to kind of almost bleed into the sky. So um, if I turn that off, you can see that we're still getting some of that. Uh, it looks pretty dark right there. I want to intensify that glow even a little more. So I'm going to hit Command I and using my super soft brush, uh, maybe I'll lower the opacity down to, you know, 30%. So with each brush stroke, I'm going to apply 30% of this adjustment. So it's just a little bit at a time. So I can really get full control and just see what I'm doing there. That's looking pretty good. Now let's go ahead and see where this was before and after. So we went from here to here. This is looking really great. Now the last thing I want to do is bring up the contrast of this beautiful monument and sort of the, the overall image. I also want to bring back this sky just a little bit. So we're going to do just a little bit of selective vignette darkening using another curves layer. Let's go ahead and create another curves. And let's go ahead and just drag that down a little bit. So as I drag this down, we're getting just a little bit of detail in those clouds. I still want the glow around the building to be there, um, but I just want to get the edges with a little more detail. So I'm going to press Command I once again. And we're just going to apply this adjustment to the edges of the sky just a little bit. Let's move that opacity up to like 50%. Here we go. So I'm not worried about bringing back detail um, right up to the edge of the building. I want it to kind of fade out so it looks like there's a glow happening around the monument and then around the model himself. Here we go. So we're just kind of, as you can see, we're starting to just see the slightest cloud detail over here on the left and the right, which just, you know, brings a little more dreamy characteristic to the photo. Now, if we go ahead and turn that on and off, you can see we're getting that detail back. Let's go ahead and um, get a little bit of that off of the monument itself. Again, we're dealing with a super glowy sky, so we don't have to make those lines totally perfect. Using a soft brush is allowing the gradient of the sky to kind of glow naturally. All right, so let's go ahead and do some more to the monument. Now this time, I'm going to uh, use my selector tool over here on curves, and I'm gonna select one of the highlights on the monument and one of the shadows. 
And this way I can work with the exact tonal range that is present in the monument. And I can just sort of raise that contrast a little bit. All right, and again, I'm just gonna apply this mostly to the monument. So using a soft brush, let's go ahead and sort of paint that in. Let's go ahead and raise that to 100%. Make sure your palette is on white to reveal that information. Let's just go ahead and sort of paint that in. Go ahead and remove it where we already had a little bit of that glow. Going a little too far there now. <laughs> you want to always find the balance between the two. And now that we've sort of lightened up our background and made it a little more dramatic, I'm noticing that my model's face is kind of dark and getting lost. So within my cam folder, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, bring that lightening up a little bit. Let's try doing that on the curves layer that we already have. There we go, that's looking good to me. There we go, now he's really popping from that background. Yeah, I like how that looks. Let's go ahead and turn that on and off. Oh wow, yeah, big difference. <laughs> really making our model pop here. So, you know, if you don't have access to um, studio lights, or let's say they're too expensive for your budget at the moment, um, a lot of these types of effects can be created with a reflector and natural light, but you can also use Photoshop to um, change the exposure of your model and really get this dramatic effect. The last thing we're going to do is a global adjustment. So anytime you're compositing multiple images together, any adjustment that affects the entire image is called a global adjustment. So we're just going to put this hue and saturation layer right on top. And I just want to minimize the reds in this photo a little bit. I want it to look a little more monochromatic. So I'm going to use this dropper tool at the top left of the hue, select this red tone. It is indeed reading as a red in our image. And we're just going to bring that saturation down just a little bit. There we go. Let's go ahead and turn that layer on and off. Yeah, so we're losing a little bit of that red that kind of takes your eye away. And now everything looks a little more monochromatic. Let's go ahead and bring down the yellows just a little bit as well. Yeah, there we go. There we go. That's looking super good. All right. So now um, I find that when you bring down the saturation a little bit on some images that have a lot of creams or like whites in them, it can really just make the image have that clean sort of commercial look. So let's go ahead and again see what the full before and after looks like. So we started with this sort of just base image of Washington Square Monument, and now we've turned it into this beautiful, liberated person uh, making their way into the future. Thank you so much for joining this tutorial. I really enjoyed sharing my process with you. If you'd like to see my full process on an exclusive pro tutorial, go ahead and check out flearn.com. Thanks so much. We'll flown you later. And that is a wrap on that. I feel like you have your, um, like, I don't know where that's coming yeah. from.